say the game is getting old. Monday morning and your coffee's cold. Life is not what you want it to be. You need another chance to be who you want to be. Hello, everyone, and welcome to A New Direction. My name is Jay Izzo, and oh, man, I love it. I love it when I have these great shows. Jay, every show's great. I know, every show's great, but this one, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, don't get your Alexa speaker too close to the show because it's, she's probably going to go into some sort of weird type of thing because we're probably going to be saying that name a lot. Why am I going to say that? Because I've got the wonderful, the outstanding, the marvelous, the magnificent, the brilliant Rhonda Scarf. Yeah, she wrote this book called Alexa is Stealing Your Job. Turn off your Alexa right now. Well, you can't because some of you, some of you actually listen to my show on Alexa. By the way, thank you for listening. So if you're listening to this show right now on Alexa, hi. <laughs> hi. Hi, Alexa. That's just going to mess them up, right? It's going to mess her up because I just said Alexa. Oh, there I said it again, right? It's gonna be, anyway, it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, I've got an Alexa. Yeah, you can hear my Alexa going on for the background. She doesn't even know what to do with the whole thing. It's, it's awesome. So. You know what? We're going to be we're going to be talking with her because it's going to be an outstanding show. She's a lot of fun. She's a brilliant speaker, and she is going to really enlighten us about what's going on in the world of artificial intelligence. And it's going to be fantastic. But before we get to her, let's do what we do every week, right? I want to walk you through the four areas of your life. You know that I believe we are four part people, right? We are physical people, we are mental people, we're emotional people, and we're spiritual people. And because of that, you know, we need to check in every now and then about, you know, how are we doing in those four areas? So let's do that on a scale of one to 10 physically, one being miserable, 10 being outstanding out there, everyone. How are you doing physically? That What's that number? That five is average. So, you know, are you better average, lower than average, right? And, 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 you know, I always tell you, ask the first question to ask is why are you that number? Why are you whatever number you are at? Why are you that number? And then the second question is, what can you do right now to change whatever number you are right now to the next number? Because I, I, you don't need to get to a 10. You just need to get to the next number, right, physically, right? So what is it? I mean, what do you need to do right now, right? Are you eating something you shouldn't? Are you drinking something you shouldn't? Are you, are you maybe not, maybe you need to get up and get out and do some exercise. You, you know, you could take this show with you on the podcast, right? You know, you can, and you know, you, for those of you who, you know, listen to Facebook live, you can actually watch it on your phone. You can listen to CastBox FM live. Some of you, you know, can tune in, you know, later on in the week to Oak 93.5 FM. I mean, there's just so many ways to listen to the show while you're actually walking around and getting some exercise. So there's a lot of ways that you could do things to help improve your physical well-being. So what can you do to help yourself get to that next number? Okay, so you got that first number, that physical number, right? What's your, the second number we're going to talk about is the mental number, right? How are you doing mentally? And what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is what are you feeding your brain mentally, right? What are you doing to feed yourself? There's two halves of the brains, right? We, we, have, we have the right side of the brain, which is the creative, you know, kind of fun side. And then we have this... Uh, logical side, the left side of the brain, which is more logical and more linear thinking, right? What are you doing to feed both halves of those brains? What what type what types of things are you doing to feed that, right? And so the same scale, one's miserable, ten's outstanding. You know, why are you mentally that way? And then what can you do to change it? You know, what can you consume, right? What can you read? What can you do? You can take up an instrument. You can maybe learn a foreign language. Pick up a foreign language. Those things all bring the whole brain together, right? Because we need to be careful about what we're consuming in order to increase our knowledge. Because the more knowledge we have, the you know better it is for us to make decisions, right? So, so on that scale of one to ten, you got that number, right? That's your mental number. So you got a physical number and a mental number, and then the third area of your life is this, the emotional aspect, right? And what do I mean by emotional? Well, the emotional aspect of you is really we talk about it in terms of two types of things, right? Emotional quotients or emotional intelligence when it comes to psychology. And, you know, what we're talking about here is, one, how well are you able to control your emotions, right? You know, do the little things bug you, right? Or can you keep yourself even, right? When somebody cuts you off in traffic, do you have do you immediately respond with that gesture from your right hand, right? Because your left hand's probably in a steering wheel, unless you give them a double gesture. In that case, you know, that's even worse, right? Because it tells you how out of control your emotions are, right? So how well are you able to control your emotions? Because you always have a choice, right? And then the second part of that is, you know, how well are you able to really emote with others, right? How you well are you really to understand their emotions, right? And, and, and walk in their shoes and as best as you can, right? That's the, that's the other piece of this, right? So on a scale of one to 10, one measurable, 10 outstanding, how are you doing emotionally, right? What's that number? And same questions, right? Why are you that way? And then, you know, what can you do to change that? immediately right so you got three numbers you got a physical number you've got a mental number you got an emotional number and then finally 
the spiritual area, right? And a lot of people sometimes give me some static about the spiritual area, but you, you know, the truth of the matter is there's things that we are never going to be able to explain with science, right? Unless you believe that we're just soil, soulless creatures. <laughs> if you believe that we're soulless creatures, I can't help you from there. But if you believe that we have a soul, if you believe that there's things that we just can't explain, if you believe that there's things that science can't explain that, that touches you somewhere deeper than an emotion, that touches you somewhere than a place that you don't understand and certainly touches you in a way that you can't explain physically. Well, that's the spiritual area, right? And, you know, we all have ways of being able to deal with our spiritual area. You know, for some people, it's God. For some people, it's, you know, nature. For some people, it's meditation. For uh, some people, they believe in karma. There's a number of different things, right, that people use in order to get themselves recentered and at peace. And, and so the question is, how's that working for you, right? How's that going? Is it going well for you? Is it, is it, is it, is it working for you? Right? So on that same scale, one to 10, one being miserable, 10 being outstanding, how are you doing in the spiritual area? Right? And then same two questions, right? Why are you that way? And what can you do to change it? Right? So you got four numbers, right? And the whole thing about those four numbers is like sitting in a chair, right? If the chair is uneven, it's not very comfortable and it doesn't do very good things for our posture. And at the same time, if the chair is too low, it makes things really uncomfortable and we can't be in a really good position to do what we need to do. So let's bring all four of those legs up, you know, work on it. And then, you know, let's bring it up to the right height so that you can do what you need to do. And that leads me to my next guest. Her name is Rhonda Scarf. She is a well-recognized, she's a well-recognized um, author and trainer, consultant, and uh, both in Ottawa, Canada and Fort Myers, Florida. Uh, since 1993, she has worked with tens of thousands of of uh, people in dozens of countries. She specializes in helping others thrive in their work environment using her proven tools and strategies. She's a unique fo focus working with your frontline support staff. By working with the people who actually do the work, she can make a lasting impression on your organizational efficiency, effectiveness, and employee morale. Organiz organizations around the world sing her praises for her relevant and useful tips on administration, communication, and workplace effectiveness. She's amazingly enthusiastic. Uh, people just rave about her. She's a certified professional, speaking professional, which you know how I feel about you know speaking professionals like myself and her. Hire her immediately. Uh, she's a she's also in the certified. She's uh, speaking in the Speaker's Hall of Fame, which is great honor. And she's the national. She's been served as the national president of the Canadian Association for Professional Professional Speakers, and the Global Speaker Federation. Uh, and uh, of course, she's been in Who's Who since 1998 of professional speakers. But uh, she is absolutely magnificent. So everybody, please welcome to the show and welcome to the show, Rhonda Scarf. Thanks, Jay. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, Rhonda, you wrote this book, and it is an outstanding book. It's called Alexa is Stealing Your Job. And I and there goes my Alexa again. Every time <laughs> I said it, I'm like, yeah, and so there she goes. So if you hear if you hear her in the back, I may just have to refer this to my Echo device uh, from here <laughs> on out because every time I say that word, uh, I get a feeling everybody who listens to the show is going to get the same problem. So I'll say it quietly. Alexa is stealing your job. That's what's going on there. Uh, th the book is outstanding. I thought one of the things I loved about reading this book, and it's uh, it's a very fast read. I thought it would it just flowed so well. I mean, I just once I started, I couldn't put it down, and the next thing I knew, I was done. And so it was fantastic. So very well written. Congratulations. Thank you. One of the uh, one of the things I really enjoyed about the read, and and is that you really really do make a case for us to say, look, artificial intelligence is coming mm -hmm. and uh, we can't stop it. And matter of fact, I want to quote you as something because I love it when um, on page seven, which favorite number, um, which you say, I'm hoping that after reading this book, you'll be in a better place to make yourself relevant. And I love that when authors will go out on record and say, this is where I'm writing this book. Because this book isn't to scare you, this book isn't to frighten you, this book is to help you become more relevant. So why don't we just jump in with you in, here and get to know um, artificial intelligence and Alexa, just in case <laughs> uh, uh, our Echo devices. Uh, why don't you Why don't you tell us what you know? What What should we? How do we define it? What should we know? How do we? I mean, because it's more than just right that Echo device, correct? Yeah, absolutely. So really, artificial intelligence, to, to make it fairly simple, is when your machine, whether you want to call it your Echo device or your <laughs> Google device or whatever it happens to be, has the ability 
to show intelligence. And that's a little bit different from a computer. So a computer will do what you tell it to do. Mm. So control P, print, you know, control S, save. So it follows instructions. But AI has the ability to not just follow instructions, but figure out what you mean and learn from that. So like if you take your Echo device and, and you, you know, you say, what's the temperature outside? She's going to respond and tell you what the temperature outside is. But she's also going to learn that you might be able to say, is it cold outside? And she's going to say, yeah, it's cold outside or it is, you know, 38 degrees or whatever it happens to be. And so she develops natural thinking. She develops, and I say she just because we're talking about her, um, they develop the ability to problem solve to learn, to understand, to almost intuitively figure out what you're trying to do. So she's not really um, like a computer where, like I said, control P means print, control S means save. Like they're, they're taught very clear functions. And much like the way people have natural intelligence, AI is developing that intelligence from what it does. It's learning. Yeah, it, it is. I, I don't think people realize that if you own one of these devices, and I know it's not, <laughs> I know it's not just uh, Alexa. I know that it's certainly there's lots, lots. Mm-hmm. You know, Google's got their own set of everything too, and I, there's there's several out there. But I think if you own one of these devices, the thing that you quickly learn is about them is that they understand more and more of what you're saying, mm-hmm. and and so all of a sudden, if you're really thinking about it, the possibility becomes limitless now i use mine all the time i mean clear i I clearly have one in every room and it's because this uh she's i call her her i I don't is is that wrong no i call it her too (laughs) okay i don't know if that's wrong i don't because i know it's not (laughs) yeah yeah i mean i i I don't want to call it it because i'm afraid and while it's listening i'm afraid i might get offended um so (laughs) no i so i call her her so it's nothing personal um well maybe it is i don't know anyway so but but she, you know, she schedules she schedules my calendar for me when I'm in a hurry. She gets my groceries for me. She, um, you know, reminds me of things. She set when I, I do all the cooking in the house. She sets all my timers. She, mm-hmm. you know, m- m- uh, my wife uses her as her alarm clock because she doesn't have to set an alarm clock. All she got to do is tell her what time she wants to get up, right? Mm-hmm. So, and and she and she learns different commands, right? You don't just have to say stop. You can say off. You know, yes. you, right. You could, they're just, and so she's picking up on things all the time. And, and then the more you talk to her, the more she's expanding this, this range, right. Yeah. That she does. And I don't know that people understand that. And I don't yeah. think people appreciate, and maybe that's a poor choice of words, but I don't think appreciate people appreciate just how vast and powerful she can be. Do they? Yeah. No, I, I really agree. I think a lot of people think that she's just a computer yeah. and she's just responding on what she's been taught. But but if you have multiple people in your house, so like in my house, I have my husband and his name is Warren and Warren can say to Alexa, you know, who's speaking? And she'll say, I'm talking to Warren. <laughs> like she knows who she's talking to. Right. And my son is Christopher and I can say, call Chris. And she knows exactly who I'm right. talking about. Or I'll say, right. call my son. Right. And she knows that that's Christopher and right. she will call him. And so there's there's just they really do learn. And the more you use them, the more they learn. Now, that, you know, can be good. It can be good, bad. But they the more you maximize them, don't just use them as a really nice speaker because they have really good speaker systems. But you use them to do stuff. They really are going to benefit everything you do at home and at work. I agree, and you make a quote on page 19 that I want to quote you on, and I want you to expand on, because this is a question I think a lot of the listeners, uh, well, not a lot, but I would say a, a good portion, right? Well, that is a lot, because I have a lot of listeners, so they, yeah, you, go. you know what, it is a lot of listeners, because they're all over the world, and they're probably going, because you said, and it's artificial intelligence should not make you fear the future, it should, it should make you look forward to it with anticipation. Do you mind yeah. talking about that and expanding on that? Because I think people need to be put at ease about this. I mean, we're trying, yeah. you and I are trying to do this, but I would love you to go ahead and, and dig into that a little deeper. So AI is going to make your life easier. If you figure out what you do on a Monday to Friday or a Saturday or Sunday, there's so much of your day that is mandated that you must do this at a certain time. We, we're very task-based. And so let's just take a Saturday. You know, typically people aren't going to work on Saturday, not everybody. And so you get up and you think, okay, I've got to do laundry. 
I've got to get some groceries. I've got to get the grass cut. Like I've got to vacuum. I got to clean the house. You know, like you've got all these things that your day off is no longer a day off. And if you think about where artificial intelligence can come in is it can take away a lot of that boring, mundane stuff. Like, for instance, in my house, it, it's not AI yet, but it will be. Um, I have one of those robotic vacuum cleaners. So it's called a Roomba. Roomba. I got one. That, yeah, yeah. Well, Roomba. Well, I had one. And so, yeah. And so it, right now, it's, it's not AI right now. So it's set right now that every Wednesday at nine o'clock, it vacuums my house. Right. But wouldn't it be nice if I didn't even need to set it? Like it all of a sudden looks and goes, holy cow, this floor needs a good wash. It needs a good vacuum. <laughs> and it automatically does it for me. Right. Like wouldn't it, wouldn't it be nice if, if I cook or, you know, it's Friday night, I sit down and I have dinner and we open the last bottle of wine. And then Saturday morning, I get up and what's sitting on my front step is all my new groceries, including new wine, because my AI knew I drank the last bottle of wine in the house. And this is the kind I want to have in the house. Mm. Like it's, it's going to open up our day so that we're not doing all of those time. It can cut your grass. It can do, you know, it could potentially do your laundry. It can be to so many things that we have to do because it's part of keeping up with life. And if all of that goes away, don't we get to enjoy life a little bit more? Like we would have time to be more social. We would have time to exercise. We'd have time to do the things that we want to do mm. instead of the things we have to do. Mm. You know, I, okay, so can I play devil's advocate just a little bit with you? Oh, please. Absolutely. Is that okay? Uh, I mm -hmm. mean, because we're on the same page, but ultimately I'm just doing this because I, I feel like, well, I know that I have listeners who go, oh, but Rhonda, 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 Rhonda. No, <laughs> I... Uh, no, you don't understand. I, I I even hate it that when I go to Amazon and then go to Google, that they're all of a sudden get feeding me advertisements of something similar that I just looked at in Amazon. Uh, that that even bothers me. I, I, yeah. I don't need my vacuum cleaner to all of a sudden wake up and decide, you know what? Um, not your decision, but your house is dirty. I'm a little uncomfortable <laughs> with that. <laughs> Help me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I understand that people don't like if you bought this, you'll like that. But but the reason they don't like it is not that the suggestions aren't helpful, because I most people most people will say, you know, they're actually right. Like, I, I do like that. Um, but what they feel afraid is, is the big brother thing. They feel that somebody's watching them or somebody's telling them their house is dirty. Well, it is. So clean it, you know. And, and so, yeah, they don't like it. But I think that they don't like the messages that they're receiving, that somebody's watching them, somebody's right. judging them, somebody's saying you need this instead of that. Mm -hmm. And I think that once we realize that it's not a person judging you that your house is too dirty or not a person right. judging you that you need to buy you know, more of this or whatever it happens it is, it really is designed to make your life easy. Like think about, you know, when you go into the grocery store and you know you need groceries, right? And Let's be honest, most people, even if they write a list, although I don't think most people do, they still leave it on the counter. And so you get to the grocery store and you end up walking through every aisle. And if you're hungry, you're going to buy way more than you need. And you're going to get to the cash and go, oh, my God, what was I thinking? Right. And you bring stuff home. And, of course, stuff rots in your fridge because you were hungry when you bought it. Yep. And you just bought an impulse. Now, if your grocery shopping was done based on AI, you wouldn't have extra things that you don't need. You right. wouldn't spend 45 minutes in the grocery store. Mm. Like it would know that you used the last of, of the butter. So another pound of butter is going to get shipped to your house. You're not going to have 14 of them in your house because you don't need 14 right. pounds of butter. Right. You know, and, and so it's going to be able to keep track of your inventory and do that automatically for you. Now, yeah, people don't like it. You can right. be devil's advocate because they don't like that something is watching. But if you look at the bigger picture, that's something just made your life a whole lot easier. Wow. That's, aw that's awesome. Her name is Rhonda Scarf, and her book is entitled Alexa is Stealing Your Job. And uh, you can hear my Alexa going off right now again. <laughs> uh, she, and she's joining here, here with us on A New Direction. That's amazing, isn't it? Hey, by the way, A New Direction is brought to you by our brand new sponsor this month, their Epic Physical Therapy. Whether you're recovering from an injury or surgery or you're suffering everyday aches and pains or maybe you're a professional athlete and you're just trying to get back into the game, look, or perhaps you're just wanting to improve how you feel and move, the elite team at Epic Physical Therapy will provide you with a customized treatment plan tailored to your individual needs. With their experience in rehab, 
rehabbing young athletes to elite professionals, and I'm I'm not I'm serious about that. They are under they understand the need to treat the entire body as a functional whole, not just your symptoms or your injury. Epic relief, epic recovery, epic results. That's what you're going to get when you go to see Epic Physical folks at Epic Physical Therapy, and you can learn more by going to www.epic.epic pt.com and also Linda Craft and Team Realtors no matter where you're at in the world they can help you find the right expert the best expert to help you sell your home or buy your home it doesn't matter they have been in the business for over 35 years and they there's a reason why they are known as the legends of customer service when it comes to real estate so why not start right away regardless of where you're at uh, when it comes to your home buying needs start with the folks and the experts, the professionals at Linda Craft and Team Realtors. You can learn more by going to www.lindacraft, L-I-N-D-A-C-R-A-F-T.com. And we thank them for bringing uh, Rhonda Scarf here on A New Direction. And we're back here on A New Direction with Rhonda Scarf and her book, Alexa is Stealing Your Job. And uh, I'm about to get into some of the um, this part of the book that was extraordinarily challenging for me, and I think will be a challenging for everyone else. I want to again, I'm going to do another quote on page 32 because I, I love what you say. I mean, let's be honest, Thank Rhonda, you. You, what you write is good, so I'm going to say it. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, you, you, know, I mean, you should see how dog-eared. I don't think people can see uh, if you're watching live on Facebook. There's, I don't know if you can see how dog-eared this book is, but it's so dog-eared because I, I think I turned around every other page uh, corner. We can stick our heads in the sand and refuse to adapt to artificial intelligence, which will also mean refusing to adjust to the changing needs of our customers. Mm-hmm. And I thought that when you made that quote, I thought, you know, I don't know how many people are going to really understand that the customer is, yes, our basic, basically we are still human. I mean, don't get, don't get wrong, right? The four areas of the life that I, of life that I went over still apply. Mm -hmm. They always will, right? We're we're still going to be physical, mental, emotional, spiritual people, regardless of, regardless of how we want to believe about that. That's always going to be true. But as a consumer, we're changing. And because uh, I had an interaction with my 31-year-old son and um, his fiance, and we were in Philadelphia last week. And he said to me, you know what? I just don't want to talk to anybody. I mean, I, I don't want to have to deal with people. I would rather the convenience of not having to deal with people is so much easier. I, I didn't I didn't want to negotiate for my house. You know, I negotiated once and I said, this isn't worth it. It's not worth my stress, regardless of what the money is. And they would rather uh, interact with almost artificial intelligent things. And you go through here from page 33 to page uh, 80, 75, sorry. A lot of pages, yeah. A lot of pages. Going through the percentage of likelihood that your job is about to become artificially intelligenced. Mm-hmm. And by the way, I'm, I'm just doing this because I've got some people, I got people who I know join us and they want to know, is my industry in there? So let me, I, just allow me, just indulge me a little bit yep. here, Rhonda, just so I can give a few people who I know what they do. If you're an insurance underwriter, you have a 99% chance of your job being taken over. If uh, you are a real estate agent, you have a, about a 97% chance of your job being taken over. And you've, you're watching it happen. You know you are real estate agents. Mm-hmm. If you're a dental laboratory technician, 97% chance of your job being take, taken over. If you're a cashier, 97% chance of a takeover. If you are a restaurant cook, 96% chance, uh, unless you're really good, right? Um, yeah. let, let me let me let me go down a little bit deeper here. All right, you want some good news? Correctional officer, you have a 60% chance of being taken over. Um, if you're a commercial pilot. 55% chance. Let me dig down here a little bit deeper, just to give you a few. If you're um, if you're a business manager, an agent, you're an artist, performer, an athlete, you got a 24% chance of losing your job to artificial intelligence. Uh, managers, 25% chance. Public relations specialists, 18%. 
Uh, chefs and head cooks, 10%. So you're good there. Um, I love this. Radio and television announcers, 10%. <laughs> hey, yay, hey, 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 you want, you want to keep me employed and keep artificial intelligence on my job? W- listen to the show and tell everybody else about it, okay? And give me good reviews. Uh, fitness trainers, you're in good shape, 8.5%. Uh, musicians and singers, 74 although I wish some of you would be taken over by artificial intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as, a, as a practicing psychological professional, I saw uh, sociologists were at 5.9%, and uh, writers and authors, which Rhonda and I are, if there's good news and bad news, the good news is we got a 3.8% chance. The bad news is we have nobody reading. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, physical therapist folks at Epic, uh, 2.1% chance you're doing just fine. But I mean, the point was the point that I think you're making here. And I did, I went a little overboard on these jobs, but hopefully everybody got a taste for some of it. But the point of the matter is that artificial intelligence is either going to take, uh, take a job or it's going to take part of your job. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is a hard pill for people to swallow and, and, and you make an argument here, and I'm going to let you make it, that this doesn't mean that you're out of work. What no. does it mean? It means that your job's going to change. So if you've got, say, a 60% probability, it's not that it's not really that your job is going to be taken over. It's There's 60% of your job that can be done by AI, or there's 10% of your job that can be done. So that means if 60, let's say there's a whole lot at the 99% category, right? Like pretty much the entire job can be taken over by some type of artificial intelligence or some kind of computerization. So if, let's say you lose 80% of your job. So obviously, if you're going to maintain your job, 80% of it's going to disappear. So you've only got 20%. So you better be darn good at that 20%. And then you've got to be able to pick up, now that you've got 80%, you know, air quotes, more time, Mm -hmm. what are you going to do that's going to provide a whole lot more value Mm -hmm. to your organization? So it's not like everybody's about to get fired. You know, that's not necessarily the case. But there's a big piece of your job that's potentially going to disappear. So let's just use real estate because I know you have Linda Craft as a sponsor, right? Yeah. So yes, a lot of that can be done. People shop for houses online. You know, you can get audit. You you can get houses now. Like you say, this is what I want, and they're going to send you that. And let's be honest, for those of us that have ever gone house shopping. The purchase is almost made before you walk in the door. You're right. just confirming it walking in the door, right? Right, right? So a lot of that can be computerized already. So if a real estate agent can take out 80% of their time-consuming stuff and they still have 20% of what they need to do, the negotiation or whatever it is, then they need to – that 80% is going to open them up to be that much better at the 20% that counts. So they're not spending all day long showing houses to people that are never going to buy a house. They're not showing houses to people that will not qualify for a mortgage because all of that can be taken care of by a computer, by an AI. But what they will do is spend the time making sure that you get the best deal. It's priced at the right price point, like get the best marketing. And that really is where their money is made. Mm. So it opens them up to be able to do much more. So thinking about that, the probability, there's over 700 jobs listed in that list. Right. The probability is that much of it might disappear, which means you need to now prove your value to your organization by replacing that mm. with something that AI cannot do and make you a far more valuable piece of real estate for your company. I love it. Uh, her, her, her name is uh, Rhonda Scarf, and the book's t- entitled Alexa is Stealing Your Job. Um, we, uh, and she heard it anyway. <laughs> she heard you. And she heard it anyway. She's, she's still having trouble connecting with that. Um, here, you can, yeah, you're hearing you're hearing her in the background. I'm going to have to say it's something different. That is funny, though. You know, it, it, nobody ever thought about this, that people are going to listen to my show on her, right? Yeah, and yeah. And every time I say her, you know, she's going to say something, right? The the book though is an outstanding read. I, I want I really am encouraging you. The book is available at Amazon, your favorite bookstore. It doesn't matter. Uh, the, the the book is fabulous, and uh, and you should you should get it. Uh, the one of the things I love about your book is that you ask. Uh, it's called um, AIQs, Ask Intelligent Questions, and you the first thing you say is grab a pen, answer the questions below. And you ask people these questions about how has your job changed over the past 20, 30 years? And to be very specific about it, because you need to start identifying 
or and you start you need to start looking at how these artificial intelligent devices you know what how have they changed i mean i i have been involved in this thing when before you know computers really were part of the internet right when they first started again on the internet people for instance didn't understand the marketing aspects and i was part of that early run and then when i when social media came out i became part of that early run as well as an early adopter and and people in every level that i've ever been at and this is one i think is included they've all said oh you know my job doesn't you know it's never going to affect me you know what my business uh, I, in my first book, I remember writing in Got Social Mediology the story of the lady who did real estate. And, you know, she said, why are you wasting all your time, you know, putting your houses up on the Internet? Nobody's ever going to buy a house on the Internet, ever. <laughs> and then a year later, she was no longer in the real estate industry. Yeah. And um, and and then I had somebody, I remember when I was, you know, coming out in Twitter and Facebook, and I was telling people, I'm telling you, this is going to be, this is the next evolution in it. It just makes sense between the internet and um, AIM. Do you remember AIM, right? The, right, yeah. we, right. We, I said, combine those two things together. I'm telling you, it's the next evolution. And everybody went, nobody's going to, nobody's ever going to do that. Nobody's going to care. Yeah. Five billion people later, right? And mm-hmm. and nobody's going to care, right? The fact of the matter is, this is this is the next evolution. Rather than rather than us having to do it we're going to ask to have it done for mm-hmm. us and you know you make such a beautiful point in this book that this has been a natural progression for us and evolution for us even since the time you know go back to aristotle um mm-hmm. we've always dreamed about things uh, that will do things for us so that we can reduce man's effort or that man can spend his time um and when i say man i don't mean that as male Okay, so don't give me the hate mail. I mean, <laughs> as mankind, uh, if womankind feels better to you, fine. Uh, I'll use that too. But as humankind, how's that? Does humankind work for everybody out there? Okay. But the the point is that as humans, uh, we could be spending more time doing things that are more important to do, that are, um, are are better for our work. And I think that's part of the thing that you're saying here too is, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you need to start looking at your work. And going, okay, well, where is your value? If what parts of your what parts of your job can be done artificially intelligently, and then what parts of you um, can cannot? And and you need to start figuring. We need to start figuring that out pretty quickly, don't we? Yes, absolutely. And what give us give us some strategies? How should we go about trying to um, figure this whole thing out? Can you can you provide a few strategies to help us figure out how to get there? Yeah, and I think some of that's going to change, and I hate to say this out loud because it's going to impact me as well, depending on your age. So if so, I'm in my mid fifties. We'll just leave it at that. And uh, so that meant that, like you, I started working before we had computers. I remember when you turned on your dumb terminal on your desk, and 20 minutes later, you'd get this little green flashing letter C, you know. And and so at that point. Um, I, if, if you look from the 80s to now, obviously there's a very long period of time in there, and you can see how much has changed, and you've seen the evolution. So for those of you that are 50, 60, 70 years old, I want you to be really honest and look back from when you started work right out of college to wherever you are now, what have you honestly seen change? And when you when, when you hit sort of the mid-1980s, you're going to see a massive move forward at that point because that's when we got computers. And then in the 90s, we got the internet. And then the late 90s, early 2000s, we got email. And we got our cell phones. And then everything got wired. Like when you look at sort of mid-1980s to now, there's been a massive speed. And if you were to write a little bit of a timeline on how fast things have moved in the last even just 10 years – So whether you're in your 50s or in your 20s, I want you to look back at the last 10 years, or for those of you that can go back 20, 30, 40 years, and do a timeline and say to yourself, what are the odds are that we're done moving this timeline? Like zero. This timeline is going to continue to grow. And if you look from the 70s to the 80s to the 90s to the 2000s to, you know, the 220s where we are, look at how fast things get replaced. So then when you sort of scare yourself to death by looking at that, then I want you to look at your job over the last 10 years and I want you to say, what hasn't changed? And what are the odds that we're going to go even another five years and that's not going to change? 
mm. like pretty low. So when you really look at how much change we've had in the workplace or in our life place, and, and like I said, scare yourself with that, and then look at what has remained stagnant, and then be really honest and say, what are the odds that that's not going to change? Mm. It's zero. So they're going to change. So then you start looking at the things that hasn't changed and say, how are we going to change that? I don't know. I don't necessarily know how it's going to change. You don't necessarily know how it changed, yeah. but I do know that it's going to change. Yeah. No, you, and so right. if you can become an early adopter, you're all over the place. I, I, I people are afraid, you know, I've, I've always yeah. said that fear is a paralyzer, right? I mean, yeah, it is. and we get so paralyzed by fear and then we go into denial, right? And uh, mm-hmm. denial mm-hmm. is the acronym that means don't even know I am lying, okay? And <laughs> so, and so often we don't know that we're lying to ourselves. And but it's fear that does that. By the way, I have to give my wife credit for that. So I, that's great. I like it. Yeah. yeah okay. She, I do. She she gives me all these great little acronyms, you know. And mm-hmm. I do I do have to give her actually credit for that. Um, and by the way, we're talking. If you're joining us uh, right now, we're talking to. Uh, Rhonda Scarf, her book, Alexa is Stealing Your Job, and you're not going to hear her this time because I unplugged her. And oh, good, thank you. <laughs> uh, the Impact of Artificial Intelligence on Your Future. It's available on Amazon bookstores everywhere. If they don't have it, you need to tell them, uh, you need to get this in because this is going to be a game changer. This is going to be a life changer. This is going to be a career changer for all of us uh, in that are, are having to deal with and understand uh, artificial intelligence and Rhonda does an amazing job of breaking it down and not only breaking it down, but really helping you uh, come up with ways to understand how you can not, well, I'm going to let her tell that piece, but not, not to be afraid of it, not to be, you're not going to be out of a job, but how you can utilize it to be part of your job. And she, she does that so beautifully well here. So uh, in my, I, I'm based out of Raleigh, North Carolina the Research Triangle Park here in North Carolina. And, of course, uh, you devote Chapter 5 to um, uh, our little town of Cary, which is a, a tremendously successful successful small town. Well, it's not a small town. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty big. It's, it's a reasonable size town. And uh, because I'll get I'll get all sorts of email from them, too, um, and, and backlash. But... You, the, the chapter is entitled, Jobs Are Changing, Will You Be Blockbuster or Carry? Now, we don't, listen, Blockbuster screwed up multiple times, right? Mm-hmm. But what has Carry got right? So Cary, it's, you know, it's in North Carolina. It's the seventh largest municipality. So it's not a big, large city that potentially a lot of people have heard of. But what they have done, they've done, their uh, CIO is a woman by the name of Nicole Raimundo. And I'm probably saying her name wrong. And I apologize, Nicole. But um, she, she, she really did some smart things. And what they've created is what's called a smart city. So they have all kinds of technology in this city on the way that it runs and the way that it's looking to the future. So it kind of it, – it, it has computerized, electronicized, artificial intelligence eyes, a new verb, uh, everything. And so they have a platform where they can see 360 degrees of all of their parks – all of their um, recreation, all of their payment, all of their parking, all of their roads. They have skills already created for Amazon Alexa, Echo. And uh, so that instead of calling and calling the city, you can actually say, Alexa, could you please contact Carrie and put in a permit? I want to do X to my backyard or something along those lines. So all of that is already working on uh, Amazon Echo. It, uh, it uses smart parking, smart recycling. It uses chat bots. It uses smart, city, uh, smart lighting. And so all of the things that they've put into play, which is incredible, will equal $5 trillion worth of value back to this, you know, not overly large city, but not bad, improving the quality of life. And so it really is, you know, one of the smartest cities in the United States on how we're providing municipal services to its taxpayers. And they're doing a fantastic job. That's, it is, it, you know what, I... I didn't know to what level until I read your book. I, I live right next door to it, right? I didn't know what to, mm. I didn't know what level they had gone to. And then, you know, when I read everything that they were doing, I was like, oh my gosh, you know? Yeah. 
Uh, it's it's so impressive, uh, by the it's way. So impressive. It's it's yeah. really impressive how they're doing, and they're they're going to save a whole bunch of money, and they're going to make uh, they're going to make the improvements are going to be amazing. Uh, we're yeah. talking with uh, Rhonda Scarf, uh, author of this book, Alexa is stealing your job, uh, and it is absolutely a fantastic read. Get it You're at Amazon local bookstore. It's available in Kindle and paperback. Um, it's absolutely fabulous. I'm suspecting because she's a speaker that she'll also be probably having this thing in Audible at some point too. I hope so. Yeah, and she's joining us here on A New Direction. Hey, listen, A New Direction is brought to you by our new sponsor, Epic Phys- Physical Therapy. Whether uh, they, they are a facility that offers the most advanced top-of-the-line equipment, including the Alter-G Anti-Gravity Treadmill, Normatec Compressing Sleeves, Game Ready, just to name a few. They are trained and certified in the most cutting-edge treatments available, including blood flow restriction therapy, dry needling, cupping, just to name a few. You can learn how they can make your life more epic by just going to epicpt.com. It's epic, E-P-I-C-P-T.com. And, of course, Linda Craft and Team Realtors, located here in the Research Triangle Park, but they can help you anywhere in the world when it comes to selling or buying your home. They can help you find the right professional for to, to buy or sell the right home because they've been around for 35 years. They stay in contact with all of them. They are networked so well in some of the best possible ways to help you find the right professional and experts to help you sell your home, buy your home. And, of course, located in Raleigh, North Carolina, you can always drop in at 7300 Six Forks Road. And you know what? They're going to hand you a free bottle of water. I promise you they will because that's what they do. <laughs> uh, every time anybody walks in the run, here, have a bottle of water. Uh, so that's what they do. And you know what? For 35 years, they are known as the legends of customer service, and you should find out why. And you can do that by going to lindacraft.com. That's www.lindacraft, L-I-N-D-A-C-R-A-F-T.com. And they're bringing you a new direction, and we and uh, Rhonda Scarf, and we thank them for that. And we're here on a new direction with Rhonda Scarf, author of Alexa is stealing your job. <laughs> yeah, how's that going for you? You feeling good about yourself? <laughs> All right, you probably you probably kind of, you probably. I've got people who are going. I'm scared to death. Dang it, Rhonda, you're scaring yeah. me. You're scaring me that Alexa's going to steal my job. Yeah. She is. So you better figure it out. Um, so you, I, I love doing that. I just, I don't know why. I, it's just, it's, it was just kind of fun, right? Because people now go, well, what do I do? Well, that's why I've got Rhonda Scarf here with me. She's mm-hmm. going to tell you what to do, right? I mean, that's the reason why I have you here is because, of, you know, people are scared. You say in chapter seven, and I love it, trainers, explainers, and sustainers. And, mm-hmm. uh, you say this quote, wrote, or I, I don't know, it's actually not you. I think it was Gartner uh, Manhunath Bot yeah. from CNBC. Robots are not here to take away our jobs. They're here to give us a promotion. So yeah. help us understand that and trainers, explainers, and sustainers. Okay. So I, I, as much as I love the title, Alexis, stealing your job, it's just one of those things that came to me one day. But I'm actually not trying to scare everybody. I really think <laughs> that AI, it's just a great title, but AI is really here to give us a promotion. And again, if you look at our history, like when we started automating things in the 50s, where we had, you know, factory lines, like remember that old funny skit with Lucy and Ethel on the chocolate factory line and like they're watching the little chocolates go one by one. We had people that did that, right? I I can't imagine what it would be like to do one of those jobs for 40 years. Like never mind the chocolate and Lucy and Ethel looked like they had a good time, but, but working on a factory line. So when factory lines got automated in the 50s, what they did is they took out a level of low tech or low paying or low quality jobs. And all of those people found other jobs because those jobs were mechanicized. They were robots. They were all of that. And then when computers came in, the same thing happened. So we used to have data entry clerks. We used to have typing pools. We used to have, you know, those are entry level jobs. And when computers came in, a lot of those jobs disappeared. Well, AI is going to do the same thing. So AI is going to take away the part of your job that gets in the way of you doing your job. Like think about those days when you're, you know, you're crazy busy and and you just don't know what's going on and you go home and you sit down on the couch and you say to your partner like, oh my God, I'm exhausted. And they say, what'd you do all day? And you're like, I don't know, because you didn't get anything done. You're doing all that task-based stuff that gets in the way of us doing 
the function of our job. So even think about putting together your radio show. There's so many little minutia pieces so that you can do this one hour of content, but there's way more than one hour oh, required yeah. to get this one hour out there. Right? right. And so if, if you could get rid of all that little stuff, think how many different programs you could put out every week. Oh. Like you could do several because you wouldn't have, to do all the task-based stuff. So what it does is it, it AI takes away all the stuff that eats at our time so that we can't do the things that are really valuable to us and to other people and to the organization. So that's the promotion. So think about taking away all the repetitive, time-consuming, mundane tasks so that you can really do the stuff that you want to do. That what brought you into radio, what brought you into real estate, what brought you into physiotherapy, what brought you into medicine, what brought you into teaching, what brought you into administration. Like that's the stuff we want to do, but it's all the yuck that we, that eats away our time. And that's why we're going to get a promotion because that stuff is going to disappear. I don't think people see it that way though. I know. I, I, I really, know. I don't, I, I don't think they do. I think there is. And I, I don't know what I'm doing here, but I'm just going to throw this out here. So maybe you can help these folks and re- maybe, how about if I put you, why don't you, you know what, Dr. Scarf, here's what we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to let you okay. be the psychologist here for a second. All, all right? right. And um, there are some mom and pop shops that, you know, that are locally owned small business, really small businesses, right? I mean, mm-hmm. that have the, the mom, dad, the family, these family owned businesses that are scared to death going, what's going to happen to me? Um, and, and, uh, and we're trying to reassure them, right. Yep. That it, it, it's going to be okay, but you're also telling me that they may not need me. And if this thing gets so big, what's going to happen to my family owned business of, you know, X number of years, what's going to happen to me? Cause I don't know they can afford yeah. all this technology. I don't know they can afford all this artificial intelligence. Well, I think what you're going to find is that artificial intelligence is going to just come and there may not necessarily be a big ticket price with it. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying it's going to be free, but it's kind of like the Internet is kind of like free. You pay for the service in your house. Mm-hmm. Right. But all that stuff just gets given to you for free. Like Google doesn't cost you a dime, mm-hmm. whereas you used to have to buy Encyclopedia Britannica. It costs you a fortune. Mm-hmm. Right. And mm-hmm. so I think that there's going to be a lot of AI. But when you look at the mom and dad small business, what they have to do is recognize that. The product, let's say they're selling, let's say it's a retail service, the product, anybody's going to be able to get anywhere. And we can do that now. Amazon sells everything. But the reason I'm going to go to that mom and pop is because of the relationship Mm -hmm. that I will get with the the fact that I've known that they've owned the store for 50 years and it was Mm -hmm. their parents in front of them. And I'm going to go for the relationship and I will never have a relationship with a chat bot. I'm never going to feel that connection. So I may go out of my way to go to your store, to go to your restaurant, to go to your company, because I know, number one, you know who I am. Number two, when I walk in the door, you're like, hey, Rhonda, here's what exactly, I saw this yesterday and I thought of you. Mm. And so it's really about the service and the relationship. So I actually think that we're going to see more of uh, a a change in the, let's just take retail as example, we're going to lose the big box stores and the big box stores are all going to go online Mm. because, you know, you don't go to Walmart because you, everybody feels great when they walk into Walmart, you you know, like you go to Walmart because it's convenient. And so when everything just shows up in your front door, that's going to be convenient. But I'm going to go out of my way to go to your store because of the relationship that you and I have. Mm. So I think that this gives the mom and pop the opportunity to provide something that online and AI cannot provide. Uh, and that's a relationship. You know what? That is so, wow. Did you, well, I hope you people <laughs> listen to her because she, she nailed it. So we're in Philadelphia last week and we go into this store whose name, I don't know that I can mention on the air, but there is a Christmas show about 34th Street that they got in an argument with, and it's a big, huge department store, and it's four letters, and it rhymes with Lacey's, okay? <laughs> and, <laughs> and so my wife walks in to this giant store, and nobody's willing to help her. Yep. There's nobody to help her. She wants to buy some shoes. She can't find anybody to help her. So she finds something that she wasn't shoes. She found something else and she wanted to check out. Couldn't find anybody to check her out. 
She had to go up to the second floor from where she was at, another floor, in order to find somebody to check her out. And then we walk into a boutique store. By the way, this store that rhymes with Lacey's was pretty much empty. And by the way, people didn't care that we were in the store. They just didn't. Mm. My wife loves to boutique shop. She loves little boutique shops, little boutique stores. We walk in the door of the little boutique store. There's people in the store. And the first thing somebody says is, hi, how are you? How's your day? If there's anything I can do to help you, just please help yourself. But otherwise, just look around and enjoy. Yeah. Right? And I'm like going, uh, huh, compare those two things. Because you're yeah. right. What's going to happen is, with all this artificial intelligence, is is the big box stores can all go online. Because we aren't getting yeah. customer service anyway. Uh-huh. But the reason why the boutiques exist is because maybe they can get a few uniqueer, uh, uniqueer. Did you hear what I just said? Uniqueer. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Though. <laughs> maybe they could get a few more unique items that you know maybe the online places are not going to spend the extra money because there's not as many of them in existence, and right. so you can find something unique. But you're going to get an experience, a customer experience that says, you know, we care about you. Yeah. On every level, and you know that it, if you're a small business owner, that's where you should have some hope. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You're going to be able to make your business run smoother, potentially more profitable because of all the systems that are in place, but you're going to be very easily able to distinguish why you're better than everybody that looks the same. Mm. Oh, gosh, Rhonda. (laughs) Rhonda, that's beautiful because I think, you know what, again, that's genius. Because, you know, eventually all of these artificial intelligence stores are going to look exactly the same. Yep. I mean, you're you're not going to distinguish Walmart from Amazon outside of that Amazon may be bigger, but you're really not going to distinguish that. You're not going to distinguish, you know, any of these major stores, even the one that rhymes with Lacey's from any other online store. You're not going to be able to do that because they're just going to warehouse everything. Everybody's going to have the same stuff. You're going to do price comparisons. Matter of fact, you're probably going to ask Alexa. Price could put, what's the best price I can find, right? Absolutely. You're not even going to have to ask. She's going to know. Right. Get it from here. Yeah, yeah, get it from here. Where's the cheap, Where's the cheapest place I can buy X, right? Yeah. She's going to know. But the beautiful thing about that is because they're going to look all the same, the boutique, the mom and pop shop, the, the customer service driven, unique shop is going to be a place where people will go, but I can go here. And get that. Oh, that's beautiful. I mean, is there something? I don't know about you, but I just, I just heard something beautiful about that, actually. Yeah. That artificial. And, and I think it applies to everything outside of retail as well. Like part of the reason radio hosts are not going to be AI is because only you have, you know, Jay's personality. Mm-hmm. You're the only one that can do this, and people are going to listen to you because they like you. I don't want to listen to a radio show that actually has Alexa doing it because. I know that Alexa is not real. Mm. Mm. And so that's emotional intelligence is one of the most um, sought after skills moving into 2020, which, you know, we're six weeks away. And so the ability to connect, the ability to have that relationship, the ability to um, provide a, a different level of relationship that is not the same everywhere is part of the promotion that we're going to be getting. And so if you're in a business, look at what your personality, what your relationships can provide that they can't get online. Mm-hmm. That's going to make you stand out. So mm-hmm. that's part of the promotion that's coming. I think this is an appropriate time. Believe it or not, I've never had a, a, a show where I've had a guest on, friend, sorry, you no longer a guest, you're a friend, you've been on with me long enough, we're friends, <laughs> um, where all of a sudden literally in our chatting about your book where it literally led right into something that's so appropriate and I'm going to read it because you, you quoted her it's by Maya Angelou yeah. I've learned that people will forget what you said people will forget what you did but people will never forget how you made them feel yeah that's right? my favorite quote my very favorite quote yeah I mean and there's there in right is the there's the answer to artificial intelligence, isn't it? Yes. I mean, yeah. she, she's got the answer. She didn't know it, but mm-hmm. she, she answered everything. How do you, how do you get, how do we, how do we, because people go, how do I compete with it? Well, she just gave you the answer. Yeah. Didn't she? Yeah. 
Yeah. So if you go back to the example that you used of your son and he doesn't want to talk to people and he just wants to negotiate, there's a very big part of our life that we all just want simplicity. We just want it easy. We just want to press click and it works. But at the end of the day, we're all still people Mm. and people need a different degrees, but people need people. And it's all about relationships. That's what business is about. It's about relationships. Mm. So when I need convenience, AI is going to be fantastic. When I need relationship, the relationships, the people, the independence is going to be very successful because that's why I want them. Mm. Beautiful. Her name is Rhonda Scarf, uh, and uh, she's written this book that's available on Amazon bookstores everywhere. Alexa is stealing your job, the impact of artificial intelligence on your future. Rhonda, we have been on almost an hour and it feels like just a few seconds and yeah. I have enjoyed you so much and I, I just can't thank you enough for being on the thank show. You. You've been, you've been a pleasure and a joy and it's been just so much fun chatting with you. I am now going to put you on the spot, Okay. but I don't think it's going to be that big for you because I think I'm, I'm going to put this on a T for you actually. Okay. So I always ask all my friends at the end of the show. Uh, the show's called A New Direction because we try to help people find a new direction in their life or their career or their business or sometimes all three. Mm-hmm. If Rhonda Scarf, my new friend, could leave my friends out there who are listening to the show with a new direction based on the book, Alexa is Stealing Your Job, what would Rhonda Scarf say? Man, I've got a hundred and some pages of what I say in that. <laughs> But I would say, like all of the things that have come before AI, those people that jump on early enough are going to be very, very successful with what it is. And so I say right now, the fact that you're listening and you're an hour into it means that you have some kind of interest in what this means. So move forward. Learn something new. If you don't have an Amazon um, Echo or you don't have a Hey Google or you don't use Siri or Cortana or any of start Mm. stop telling yourself that this is just a passing fad and it'll never work it Mm. it is a hundred percent going to work so be willing to be open Mm. to what it can do keep your eyes open to the possibilities and if you get dragged in kicking and screaming it's 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 going to be a horrible thing for you Mm. but if you're willing to say you know what I not only am going to be open to this I'm going to look at how me, my department, my company, my organization, my family, my country, my whatever can be better because of it and jump Mm. and and go there soon. Mm. (laughs) Don't go kicking and screaming. Mm. And there's your new direction, folks. Yeah. Folks, her name is Rhonda Scarf. The book, Alexis Stealing Your Job, available all over the place. Please just get the book. It's going to it's gonna enlighten you. It's going to inspire you. And she's got so many great little questions to ask yourself to help you kind of, you know, not be afraid of it. Work alongside these machines, uh, which is going to be awesome. Uh, folks, you know what I say every week, right? I say be inspired because when you're inspired, that means... Uh, You will inspire someone else, and in turn, they can inspire others, and that can make this world the most marvelous place to live in. I'm going to be back next week with another fantastic guest, and I always appreciate and I'm so grateful for all of you listening all over the world and all over this country that I get to live in. I thank you so much. And as I say every week, and you know what it is, ciao, everybody. your confidence and the answers don't make sense you got to keep your hope alive you got to know you can survive this is your time to find a new direction a brand new day a new direction things are gonna change Your dreams will take you places you have never been before. Find your passion, find your strength. Don't worry anymore. 
a new dime.